Today I'll be using the mixed media inks and you will be able to see how beautifully they blend and flow and how you can create gorgeous backgrounds using these inks. Hi there everyone, welcome to Creative Coloring with Iram. This video is part of the Alter New Educators blog hop and uh, we have such an interesting theme this time which is the alphabet name game where you have to use the initial of your first name and use a technique or a layout style or anything that you can think of. Uh, for my card I chose embossing, I found the easy way out. So let's start. So I will be using the Build a Flower Lelia stamp set and the coordinating die with it. This was released just a few days ago. As you know, all our Build a Flower stamp sets are released on the first of every month. And this is the Build a Flower for the month of October. I will take an A2 watercolor cardstock and I will prep this with anti-static powder. My anti-static powder is uh, just cornstarch. Then beneath my watercolor cardstock, I have put my stamping mat on because it adds a bit of a give and uh, you can stamp your images really well. So I am just using embossing ink and I will stamp on the 80 watercolor cardstock. And then I will pour golden peach embossing powder over this. And then heat set it. So I was thinking that today I will use the mixed media inks or the pigment inks by Altenew to watercolor. I've never used them uh, to watercolors and what you see right now on the screen is going to be my very first try. I did not struggle at all with these inks. They were wonderful to watercolor with. And we have uh, these inks in four families now, the pinks, the greens, yellows and blues. So we have all the basic colors and we also have a black in the green pack. So I will start by smushing some of the ink onto my watercolor palette. This is from the Red Cosmos family. This is uh, Frosty Pink, Coral Berry, Ruby Red and Grape Wine. I'm using the fine detailed brushes by Altenew. This is the number one brush that I'm using. Then I will apply water to the petal and then drop in the pigment, a uh, Frosty Pink pigment. This is the lightest one. This is such a beautiful pastel color. It looks absolutely pretty. And I don't really need the other three colors or even the other two ones that I will be using. But just for shading, I did add those. But you can only just use this one color and it just build up layers because the mixed media inks by Altenew do dry permanent if you heat set them. So I'm going to add this uh, frosty pink pigment on to all the petals and uh, I will add a more concentrated pigment where I am going to be showing shadows. Like for instance, the first petal I colored, I added a little bit towards the left lower edge, a um, little bit more pigment there. And then on the second one, there is a dip in the middle of the petal. There's a line there. I'm going to add more color there. And you can blend this out a little bit and if you don't blend it out that's fine too. But just to get a very beautiful satiny finish we're going to blend this from the start. I will also try to keep the tips light but not worry too much about it because this first color is a light color and we will be adding more pigment on there so it will uh, become light on its own when we add the dark pigment. But if you take care of this a bit in the start, in the beginning, we won't have to worry too much about it or work harder later on. So if you see a raised portion on the petal, try not to apply too much pigment on there because that is going to be where our highlight is. So just keep these few things in point. Shadow and light affects the look of the flower a lot. While the flower is still wet, I'll go ahead and add a bit of coral berry pigment to that center um, that you see so that I can show a bit of depth. So now I will go back in and add a light concentration of coral berry pigment. I'm going to add this to the lower edge where I added a little bit more of the frosty pink and then I will spread it out. 
For spreading it out towards the tip, I'm going to clean my brush so that it doesn't have a lot of pigment or no pigment at all because we want to keep that tip of that uh, petal uh, light. Anytime you add a lot of pigment and there's a harsh line, clean your brush and soften that line or the area where you apply that blob of color. You can see that I am doing the same thing that I am applying a bit of pigment there and if it's concentrated I will clean my brush come back in again and soften that line and it does work these are water reactive till you, you heat set them so I will be heat setting them once I add the first layer of shading that I want to add now that I'm happy with the first layer, how it's looking, I'm going to heat set this so that this is safe and preserved. After drying this flower, I'm going to add a more concentrated coral berry pigment. And again, I'm going to add a line and then clean my brush and soften this, spread it out to outwards towards the tip of the petal, but not reaching the tip, just stopping midway. And if I still have a bit of... Uh, pigment uh, on my brush or if I have a line in uh, the middle of the flower like for instance an ink line so what I will do is again clean my brush and then soften that line again uh, as well this is something that you will have to try on your own to really see how the mixed media inks or the pigment inks work as watercolors but they're very easy to watercolor with. They're beautiful and wonderful. And, and what I like about it, this is that you can set the layer that you've worked on and that you do not want to disturb. Use grapevine to deepen those shadows and add a little bit more depth. For the leaves, I'm going to apply frayed leaf, forest glades and the evergreen pigment ink onto the palette in the same manner as I did those red inks and then I will pick up color from this palette. First I will apply water to the leaf and then add the lightest uh, ink which is frayed leaf. The leaves are so slim and thin I'm not going to be very particular about this I'm just going to add a little bit of color and I know that I will add shading on the lower edge of uh, the leaf so I will do that by adding uh, pigment as stippling. Even with the leaves I'm going to keep the tips and that upper edge of uh, the leaf a little light so I'm not going to be applying the forest glades pigment Till the tip of the leaf I will just apply it on the lower edge and then I will add the green the evergreen pigment as stippling on there you don't necessarily have to add stippling if you don't like uh, texture on your uh, watercolor images but uh, because I'm not used to coloring such a pretty flower and <laughs> that looks so clean so there has to be a little bit of texture on there for me Otherwise, my background and my image are going to be so different from each other. Once done, I will move back to the flower and add a few dots in the center of the flower. For my background, I will be using Arctic, Caribbean Sky, Persian Blue and Sapphire Mixed Media Inks and uh, I am just smooshing these, all of these on to the palette because I wanted to show you how super creamy and gorgeous they look. These are the new inks and I really love these uh, shades. So what I'm going to do is I will apply water to the panel and then I will drop in the arctic pigment. This is very light and you will not be able to see it much. It will not make a lot of difference when you add it. Um, if you want a dark background that is so I'm just but I'm going to be building layers so that is how why I started with the lightest one and again I told you that this is the first time I'm trying these mixed media inks as watercolors most of the concentration for this uh, color that I'm adding to my background is going to be on the top edge and on a little bit on the left side too if you follow my tutorials, you know that this is something that I do most of the times. I stick to one edge 
of the card and then keep the other opposite edge of the panel clean. So I will build my layers by adding Arctic and then Caribbean sky, then Persian blue and then in the end Sapphire. This is how the background will also have a kind of an ombre look. If you don't add splatters to it, you will be able to see the ombre look. But later on, what I did was I am going to be pouncing my brush, taking one of the inks, the sapphire pigment ink. I'll be taking that and pouncing my brush in uh, other areas as well, just to add a bit of um, mottled effect. And while it's still wet, I will add splatters of uh, Persian blue and sapphire so that the splatters bloom and become part of the background. Then I will dry the panel and add more splatters, concentrated splatters of a sapphire pigment. I will then stamp my sentiment and apply a few more uh, splatters but this time I'm going to be using black paint and apply very very fine just few splatters not to overtake uh, the blue that I have added and just to balance that black sentiment. Then I will adhere my floral image with instant dimension foam tape. So here is uh, the final look at all the inks that I used to watercolor. You, I basically took out that arctic because I don't think so you need that the three blues are enough for the background but you can definitely add it if you for if you are first timer like me and you're not sure about how to use these as watercolors but they were very easy and uh, fun to use as watercolors so i hope you liked my project i think it turned out really pretty i wasn't expecting uh, such a beautiful blue background and the thing to look such gorgeous with it I hope you stop by the blog and take part in the All to New Educators uh, blog hub. It's an, such a fun theme and we also have a lot of prizes. Make sure to check it out. Bye. Hello there. Did that video just spark your creativity? And do you want more project ideas and inspiration videos too? Well, if you do, please make sure that you subscribe to the All to New YouTube channel. Also, make sure that you do click that notification bell so you don't miss a video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.